Just off of the coast of British Columbia, the Gulf Islands have long been a haven to alternative lifestylers. It's a place where artists and adventurers alike can call home. And that's exactly what's happened with this next couple, who found paradise and built a home to match. Hey Cass, how's it going mate? Good, good to see you. Good to see you. Hi Rebecca. Hi. Lovely to meet you. Lovely to meet you too. This is such a beautiful home that you have here. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. What was it that inspired you to build a tiny house on wheels? I think uh, I just wanted my own space and I did a lot of moving around. So just a space to be tucked into the woods and I wasn't able to buy land, didn't have enough funds to be buying lots of acres or to be building a big house. So this was an amazing alternative for me. I didn't know it at the time, but uh, I think part of me was really craving to get closer to the land and to live in a way that was you know, you're going outside and you're you're really absorbing the, the outdoor elements. So it's about um, living and experiencing and uh, that's really important to me and that's why I love living uh, simply and those were huge uh, reasons why I wanted to go tiny. Well, you've certainly found that here in this location as well. What a beautiful parking spot you have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel... Uh, pretty lucky to be tucked back into this property and to be enclosed in from the forest. It's pretty great. It certainly is a magical spot. Feels like you're close to everything, but miles away here, you've got all the wildlife and everything. It's mm -hmm. kind of nice having the deer walk past here almost every morning, which is really nice, and a whole lot of birds, and feels like our own little piece of paradise. Now, Rebecca, you were the one that actually built this home, weren't you? Yeah, so about five years ago, uh, I designed the house and uh, my friend Rudy did the majority of the building. So since then, Cassa and I have been living together for a couple years and uh, we have a couple outbuildings, uh, a workshop and a little micro house as well. So it's just been kind of evolving as the years go by. <laughs> so Cass, you were a later addition here. Rebecca had already been living in the tiny house for a while. What was it like for you to come into tiny house living? I feel like I got lucky with my transition because um, I was actually living mostly out of my van for a few years, which was an incredible space. I do miss her. So it was almost like an upgrade space-wise. I had more room for everything and I could stand up and spin around and yeah, so it was uh, quite an easy transition for me. I thought that, uh, yeah, like I was getting my whole new place. <laughs> yeah, an upgrade for sure. So tell me about the construction of this tiny house. Yeah, so the build uh, happened pretty fast. Uh, before we actually started building, I was collecting materials. I got all the windows first um, and I got them uh, used. So I got them for a really good price. Uh, these doors actually came out of a dumpster, so I was able to repurpose them. So the house is a combination of uh, new material and locally sourced material, which was really important to me. So yeah, the whole building process took about six months. The house was built on a different property and then brought in here and then that's when the deck was built. I wasn't sure how big the deck was going to be or if I wanted a big deck but then it became very clear that uh, in this type of environment a covered deck was really important and then just a space to be outside mm -hmm. and then in the winter time we're able to be warm and cozy inside. Yeah. Hang up to dry all the stuff too after a big camping trip it's nice to actually dry out before you go back out again so having a covered space for hanging is pretty awesome. And then what size is this tiny home? The size of the tiny house is 22 feet long by eight and a half feet wide. And from the base of the wheel to the very top is 15 feet. Well, I really love the look of the home that you've created here. It certainly looks like it's supposed to be here on the land and wonderfully nestled into the forest. And I'm very excited to check out the inside. Can we take a look? Yeah, yeah let's do it. Let's check it out. All right. This is absolutely lovely. Stepping into this home, it actually feels more like an earth home than a tiny house on wheels. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Originally, I wasn't sure exactly what was gonna go on the walls, but once the space was built, it was very clear. It wasn't gonna be wood. And so this is 
uh, American clay, and yeah, it's just applied like a plaster. Makes it feel really warm in here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it definitely does give the home this lovely kind of warm aesthetic to it, and also just adds this super interesting visual aspect of the way that it creates this shadowed look on the walls, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really like how the texture comes into play, and then the great thing is, is that if it does get nicked up, you just get it wet and then you kind of smudge it all back into place. So it's nice to, to fix up the next little walls. Easy to maintain, yeah. <laughs> Super easy, I like that. Mm -hmm. So when it came to designing the tiny house, Rebecca, what were some of the things that were really important to you? What did you absolutely have to have in this home? So something that was really important to me in designing the house was a lot of light, um, a lot of windows, not a lot of uh, storage on walls. I want it to be open. So this house is more about connecting with the outdoors to be able to see and hear the rain. Uh, the French doors open up, the windows all open up so the breeze can come through and allow um, the fresh air to come into the house. So this house is about the connection with the outdoors instead of fighting it and staying inside all the time. I really love that. Mm -hmm. And so immediately upon entering this home, we are now in your lounge space. <laughs> and I really like how you've done it. This little window alcove that you've created is so cute. Yeah, the living room area is all open. So this is um, a place we just sit and have coffee, drink wine and relax. <laughs> and then this space is uh, used for yoga. We work out and we can push the chair out of the way. We can have a group of friends here. So this is definitely the living area where a lot of stuff goes on here. And it's all warmed by this lovely wood stove that you've got here. And let's talk about the stone backing that you've created for that because that is really special. Yeah, the stone backing of the fireplace was created because uh, a couple different reasons. One, I didn't have a tile cutter. So this was my way of uh, affordably making tile. And then it's yet another element of uh, the outdoors coming inside. So the river rock being incorporated into the design. So all of these stones actually were from a friend who had a big mound and uh, I just went and picked out all of the colors that I like. So I got all the white ones and I spent days trying to find all the blue ones. So it was a little bit time consuming, but it turned out to be one of my favorite parts of the tiny house. I can see why. Definitely it was worth all of the extra time spent. Mm -hmm. And then these feature stones are also continued in the kitchen with this beautiful bat splash and you've got all of this live edge timber. This is lovely. Yeah, and the slabs are also local. So that was wonderful to bring in some local wood into the house and then the counters are actually slightly different heights this one's a little bit taller because uh, I'm a little bit taller not as tall as you but that was important for me I feel like I've always been just like hunched over just a little bit so I know the feeling yes I can imagine <laughs> can <understand. laughs> so designing your own house you can just make the counters any height you want so that was really important and so talk to me about the design of the kitchen here yeah, the design of the kitchen space is very simple. I want it to be open and more window space than uh, storage. All the food storage and the cutlery and the pottery is all underneath of here. And then just have like simple ingredients um, and mason jars on the shelves. Uh, and then we went with a pretty deep farm style sink, which makes it really easy to do dishes. Yeah. and the. Uh... The burner is propane, which is nice. Two burners is great, and uh, the propane is nice because regardless if you have power or not, you always got some fire. Uh, and it's also nice having the little wood stove here. It gets a quick water boil on in the winter time when we got the heat on anyway for the house, or a nice simmer for some for some frying as well. So you can go from two burners to four pretty quick if it's the right time of year. And so speaking about the power, what do you do for power and water here? For power and water, we are uh, on rainwater catchment. So all of our water, our kitchen sink, and our uh, shower area um, is all rain. And um, the house is heated pretty much just with our uh, wood stove. And then the power, we are hooked up to uh, a main line. So we do have electricity. I'm not sure how much electricity we're using, but it's pretty minimal. Yeah. We use candlelight sometimes, and the lights are rarely on, especially in the summer. I don't think we ever use them. And at the end of your bench here, you also have this lovely breakfast bar. 
yeah, so we do a lot here, uh, computer work and eat meals and uh, we can even put a sewing machine up here. So we definitely spend a lot of time at this bar. Fantastic. Who's the sewer between the two of you? Cass. So I'm actually... learning from one of the best. <laughs> no, I got a lot to learn, but uh, I was able to fix all the clothes I ripped this year and make my first two uh, cushions with zippers on the back. So I uh, felt pretty accomplished in my sewing this year. What I really like about this lifestyle is having a small footprint, especially if we want to leave something for the next generation after. We have to learn to deal with what we have and not always want more. So by living this lifestyle, I can try and use exactly what I need and not have excess. It just sits, be it in you know, resources or material, just to take what I or we need and then continue on with that and be happy. And then behind us here, we have your bathroom. Yeah, this is the bathroom and closet storage space. There is definitely a very impressive amount of closet space in here. Yeah, it was uh, pretty important to have uh, a lot of storage and then now being two of us in here, there's more than enough uh, storage for all seasons and backpacks and stuff. Yeah, the, one of the biggest space upgrades from the van was walking into hanging closet space of this magnitude. <laughs> it was quite a good change. I bet it was. <laughs> And then over here we have your wonderful trough, tub, and shower. And this is where all of those blue stones ended up. <laughs> yeah, they all got plugged into the floor here. <laughs> Another solution to not knowing how to tile. This looks really great. There really is nothing quite like a river stone floor in a bathroom, is there? Yeah, I absolutely love it. And it just feels so good on your feet in the morning. Yeah. And there is no toilet in here, I notice. Yeah, we do not have a toilet in here. No, we uh, actually have a couple of different composting toilets, like outhouses, and we use one until it's time for it to compost, and we switch over to the other, and then by the time it's time to switch over to that one, we have good soil for the garden or whatever, and the outhouse to use again. Good way of doing it. And then above us, we have your sleeping loft. Yeah. That's right. Can we check that out? Definitely. Okay. And what is this contraption you've got here? <laughs> It's a hangboard. It's uh, for helping build up finger strength and grip strength for rock climbing. Super and, cool. Uh, so you're a climber? Yes, did it. I used to climb a bit more than I do now, but it's still really fun to get on there. And in a pinch, you can swing up to the loft on it. But uh, other than that, there's a ladder that just tucks under the bed here, and uh, we can slide down right over top of it and uh, lets us get up and down. So should we check out the loft? Yeah. Yeah. After you. This is really nice. I love all of the windows that you've got up here. Yeah, the windows, again, were of such an important part of the design. Having a skylight right above the bed, I think is so important in tiny houses to be able to watch the stars while you lay in bed. And it's great how you've got the map here on the ceiling as well. Yeah. Helps plan the uh, next adventure if you're just laying around and figuring out what trip you want to do next. <laughs> And let's talk about budget. What was the cost of building this home? So the building materials itself cost about $30,000. And then the labor for the house was about $25,000. And that included the carpenter and a gas fitter, an electrician and a plumber. So about 55 altogether. And how is tiny house life working out for you? I love tiny house life. I don't really think of it as tiny house life. I just think of it as life and I just feel like it's a wonderful lifestyle just to be able to focus on what's important in your life. It works really well for me and the lifestyle I live and it's also uh, really cool to be able to show folks that you really can have a full and happy life with less. Depending on the culture society you grew up in, there's ways of living that are seen as the way to be or that's the, what should be what you're aiming for. But it's really cool as you explore different alternative means, be it tiny houses or smaller impacts, is there is no one right way to do it. And that doesn't have to look a certain way, be a certain way, or cost a certain amount of money. Having a tiny house means to me freedom to leave for periods of time and to always come back and to have a home. And I don't know if I'd be able to do that with a uh, traditional large house per se. So it's really allowed me to live in a way where I'm able to explore more and travel more, but then also feel so held and safe and taken care of when I am here. So that's been amazing. 
Well, you really have done such a beautiful job with this home. The style is just so warm, welcoming, and it's really unique what you've built here. Thank you so much for sharing it with me. Ah, oh, thanks so much, Bryce. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. This is a tiny house that really feels like a home. There are so many wonderful elements to it, like the clay rendered walls and the river stone, the fire and the candlelight, as well as the connection to the outdoors that really makes this feel like a space that you just want to come home to. For Rebecca and Cass, this really is a wonderful place.